you spoke on authentic worship mm-hmm. last week and actually uh, inspired me a little bit. Mm. Uh, a Bible verse came to mind that I wanted to share. Sure. Um, uh, Hebrews uh, 13.5b, uh, God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Mm. And really what I took away with that is is that God is never going to give us up and he's never going to let us down. <laughs> Welcome to Midweek Mashup. Well, hello and welcome to Midweek Mashup. I'm sitting down with Pastor Ty this week, and we are talking about authentic worship. <laughs> yes, we are. That's what we're doing. Um, and I know I know, a big point of your sermon was looking beyond musical worship. Yes. But I had to. I oh, had, of course. I had to reference a song. Of course. What was kind of the sermon that you gave about? So I kind of broke it down into two sections mm-hmm. of when we normally talk about worship or when, if you've been around the church for a while or a church or even just kind of like seen like Spotify, when you go to Spotify, there's a Mm -hmm. worship and gospel section of Spotify because Mm -hmm. that's normally what we think of with worship is music. Right. We normally think of music. We think of worship bands or Mm -hmm. worship songs Mm -hmm. or a worship service that incorporates worship. Sometimes we'll do uh, worship nights where the whole Mm -hmm. thing is just music. Um, sometimes you'll incorporate other aspects of it though. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where I wanted to focus on worship music as part of it. And then worship life as a Mm. second part of it, which isn't proper grammar, but I Mm -hmm. thought that that kind of actually worked because Mm -hmm. nine times out of 10, when I say worship, we go to the music, but I think it's Mm -hmm. important to also understand that the rest of our life is worship. And that's where on a worship night, I like to incorporate things like prayer Mm -hmm or testimony, or um, the sharing of scripture, Um, just not necessarily to make it like a regular service, like a regular Sunday morning Mm -hmm. gathering, but like to make it sort of a holistic experience in a way. Um, In a lot of ways, like worship life is just living as Christ has asked us to, Mm. and looking at scripture and seeing what God has asked us to do and how he's asked us to interact with the world and behave and and, uh, interact with each other. And that following that kind of template and following those uh, examples, that in itself is an act of worship. And Mm. so um, I wanted to kind of split it into two categories there just because this second category of worship life is most of our life. Like, Mm -hmm. Like I broke it down in my sermon a little bit of like mathematically, if you only worship the time we're singing songs together, Mm -hmm. it's like less than 5% of your life. Um, And that's assuming you go to every single service of every single Sunday Mm -hmm. of like you sing 20 to 25 minutes of worship a Mm -hmm. week, if that's all you do. And that feels very small. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) But that that worship life piece informs then the stuff we sing. Mm -hmm. And vice versa. When you sing, like I gave a few examples from the songs that we sing here at FCC, but when you sing these words, are you living your life in a way that actually what you're singing and what you're saying on Sunday morning reflects into the way that you live your life? Mm -hmm. Um, I was actually just talking about it with Pastor Eric as we look forward to the next two weeks of our series. What are the songs that interact with these topics that we're going to sing? So Mm -hmm. like in a couple of weeks when we get to dangerous justice and mercy mm-hmm. um fun a little sneak peek for everybody if you want to know what the songs are uh one of them that we'll be singing is instrument of peace mm-hmm. because that is something that when we think about justice when we think about mercy when we think about interacting with the world around us in this way that can mm-hmm. be a little bit dangerous mm-hmm. uh which i won't take too much time on this because i don't want to spoil eric's message but being an instrument of peace is something that is required in a lot of these circumstances. We mm-hmm. aren't, God doesn't call us to like break down doors and like mm-hmm. like muscle our viewpoint onto other people, but mm-hmm. like we are called to be peacemakers. Mm-hmm. And so we're gonna mm-hmm. sing that song in accordance with the way that we live our life based mm-hmm. on the teaching, based on what scripture says. And so authentic worship though, it incorporates both of those elements, I think. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot that I kind of had to just leave alone with the worship music Mm -hmm. piece because I'm a huge music nerd. I love Mm -hmm. music, Mm -hmm. but I think it's more important to focus on this worship life piece of it than it is necessarily to think about the worship music piece of it. Mm -hmm. Luckily, we we have some some time here uh, during our midweek mashup (laughs) to circle back to some of those things. Yeah. Uh, What if you could circle back to to that uh, musical worship piece a little more Mm -hmm. or if there's anything else that you left out? Uh, what's kind of would you add to, uh, to your message? 
Well, I mean, like, there's, like, all the nerdy stuff about music that, like, if you really look at music as a whole, and mm-hmm. like I said, if you had go to Spotify or Apple Music or whatever, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. YouTube music, whatever you use to listen to music, and you look at mm-hmm. genres, you'll sing, like, rock, rap, funk, jazz, mm-hmm. country. Mm-hmm. All of these are based on the way the music sounds. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Now, all of these pieces of music have different lyrical content that they, like, you're not going to go to a jazz song and hear a song about your tractor that's right. really reserved for country mm-hmm. but all of these songs also fit into a musical uh sound mm-hmm. like if uh like every song every genre has a version of a love song right but right. a country love song sounds mm-hmm. different than a um than a rock love song mm-hmm. like a love ballad right like right. but the when you get to christian music or when you get to worship mm-hmm. music mm-hmm. that's really where the line is drawn of this is kind of determined based on the lyrical content. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's where, like, with worship music today, I kind of wonder, man, what does it look like for us to authentically worship even musically mm-hmm. when all of our worship music kind of falls into the soft rock genre? Mm-hmm. Like, that's kind of where most of modern music fits. Mm-hmm. And then you've got hymns, mm-hmm. and those are kind of their own separate thing. And mm-hmm. then you've got, like, gospel music, Mm -hmm. which gospel music is kind of the oddity because it lives in its own sound. Like gospel music Mm -hmm. sounds like gospel Mm -hmm. music, but it's also distinguished by its content. Right. Um, But kind of the modern Christian music that we listen today, like I kind of wonder what would it be like to authentically worship to with a lament song, Mm. but it's in a blues genre. Mm. Like, because when you think of blues, you think of that like style of music, it kind of evokes this emotion that is different than mm-hmm. like a soft rock song. Yeah. And so if we were to sing lament in this way, in this genre, what would that feel like? Like mm-hmm. what would that be like experientially? Because mm-hmm. again, while I talked a lot about the worship life thing, worship music and music in general is very um, important to the human experience. Mm-hmm. Like it, there are some studies that are out there that have been kind of uh, investigating what is the actual need for humanity with music or art in general? Mm-hmm. And that's like another piece of worship that I really didn't even get to was mm. art. Like yeah. um, the the writing of lyrics, the writing of poetry, the mm. creation of visual art. And like mm-hmm. you think of some of the ways that um, Christians before have expressed their worship through painting mm-hmm. or sculpting. You yeah. think of, of course, like the greats like Michelangelo and those guys in Europe who made – the Sistine Chapel, mm-hmm. the statues mm-hmm. of, of the the Christian stories, like that is an expression of worship and in, in an art form. Mm-hmm. And that has stood the test of time. And when we go, uh, of course, now popular culture, everyone across the world looks at these pieces of art and sees like a, a classical great work of art. Mm-hmm. But for us as Christians, I wonder what it feels like to look at that piece of art. I've never mm-hmm. seen it with my own eyes. I've mm-hmm. Google image search, all that jazz. But like mm-hmm. to go and see that with your own eyes and see this as a piece of worship, as mm-hmm. a piece, as, as an mm-hmm. expression of the goodness of God and, and the way that he's worked through humanity and, and kind of created this grand story to bring us back to himself. Mm-hmm. Like that's a piece of worship that, for the creators of that and for the people viewing it probably at the time was authentic. Mm -hmm. And I I always wonder, like, you think of those great pieces of art as like, man, everyone around me right now looking at this probably doesn't see it as that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it's just art. And art's great and it's cool. Mm -hmm. And, like, we look at it and people study it and have continued to explore it. But I always – I kind of wonder if that's the way we kind of start in certain seasons feeling about music as well. Mm, when we mm-hmm. come to Sunday service or when you're, you're at church every Sunday or you're listening to your worship playlist over and over again and it just kind of starts feeling like background noise mm. almost. And that's where, man, I, I really hope and pray for um, for, for our church, for myself, for, for us as a leadership team to, mm-hmm. to really kind of keep it in the forefront and keep it in its correct place. Yeah. I'll gen, I like, I try to change up my worship playlist, uh, f- not frequently, but enough mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to like keep it new and just so that when it's, it's not something that I just kind of leave as white noise. Mm-hmm. Um, 
That being said, you can have worship music on in the background. I'm not saying mm-hmm. that's a bad thing. Right. But I also want to make sure that when we come to Sunday service, that we're authentically engaging with the words, with the mm-hmm. lyrics. That's mm-hmm. I th- One of my slides was just the words matter mm-hmm. because they do. Mm-hmm. Um, now, that being said, I think that's where some of the genre stuff that I had to leave behind, like the music matters too. Yeah. And there's a reason that like the song Gratitude that we introduced this past Sunday has meant mm-hmm. a lot for me. Uh, as uh, me and my family have been going through some things, but mm-hmm. it's it's not just because the song lyrically speaks to us. Mm-hmm. It's also the uh, the emotion that is invoke, uh, evoked with the 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 notes, mm-hmm. like the the actual sounds that are created from the instrument. There's a lot of power in that as well, and I like uh, I think there's that that's an interesting thing that I could probably talk about for a while. We mm-hmm. could talk about how did worship music end up in soft rock, essentially? How mm-hmm. did we end up with four worship songs? How did we end up yeah. with a, a worship <laughs> service that always kind of goes with this? And even if you don't, if you attend a different church besides FCC, you'll probably see some of the same mm-hmm. um, pieces and, and uh, things and in, in just maybe rearranged a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I kind of had to leave all that stuff behind. And that's where... Man, I think it'd be interesting to dive into a little bit of why worship services end up the way they do mm. and how does authentic worship musically look like outside of our Sunday service? Because mm. that's mm-hmm. another thing. It's like with worship music and worship life, I really only talked about the music piece inside of Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. And worship music exists outside of Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it's on Spotify. It's on – there's Christian radio stations you can listen listen to. Mm-hmm. And I think there's there's an interesting – an interesting opportunity there. And mm-hmm. man, there are some things I, I know uh, I was looking back at the the last time we did um, midweek mashup mm-hmm. and the last time I preached, we talked about how it's hard to fit all you want to say <laughs> into those 20 to 25 minutes. Yeah. And you, you can just kind of go. Mm-hmm. And if you were to sit down with me, like as I was prepping for the sermon, you'd see this huge Google Doc that is just like mm-hmm. pages and pages of notes. And then like I've got to – like I press enter a bunch of times to shift it all down the page and mm-hmm. then write the sermon right. of just right. like, all right, how can I fit all of this stuff mm-hmm. into what we want to say? Yeah. And I think that's where, man, with music especially, like – I think worship music is an interesting experience of to write it. I've mm-hmm. I've not written a song. I've written like the starts of like thirty to forty songs <laughs> and just said I'll finish that later. <laughs> Never gets finished. Uh, maybe one day. But like the the experience of writing down uh, in in an artistic fashion, not mm-hmm. necessarily in like a factual kind of practice, but like an artistic expression of what God has done, mm-hmm. man, it's it's an interesting practice because uh, at God as creator, as, as a creative um, being, like he created us and we as humans get to express the teeny tiniest little um, piece of that, mm-hmm. of, of creating and being creative and as creating music and art as a offering to mm-hmm. God as a, as a reflection of, of who he is and how I've seen him work. It's such an interesting experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that's kind of why it's, it's hard for me to finish those songs. Cause it's like, I can't fit all the things I want to say into this artistic expression, mm-hmm. but I think worship music is so powerful. It's, it's such a, a great, um, honor is, is what I always uh, say. It's an honor to be a part of what God is doing and use the gifts and talents that he's given me and, and members of the the worship team to, to express our worship through music. But I also, I also would uh, copy and paste essentially that statement to the other areas of service mm. that I talked about on Sunday with, with Powerhouse and Student Ministries. Um, before coming to FCC, I was a student pastor and a kids pastor, mm-hmm. and I would say the exact same thing about it's an honor and a privilege to to express my worship through the offering of the mm-hmm. experiences that God has given me to to teach students and kids about who Jesus is. Like yeah. that is uh, the I would I would say those are the kind of the exact same emotion and exact same experience of kind of returning uh, who I am and and kind of offering it back to to God in mm-hmm. a way. But that's like, man, I feel like 
there are so many spider webs you could go off yeah. of that, right? Like each thread that you chase kind of goes to something else. And I don't know, maybe maybe one day we'll have a blues lament song, <laughs> but I don't know, probably not written by me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I uh, appreciate you sitting down and, and sharing, and I, I, I really uh, I like what you said about taking that worship and applying it to different areas. Mm. And just want to give a shameless plug to our missional communities. Uh, and, and taking those things, uh, you talked a lot about the ways within the church that we can serve, uh, and there's so many ways outside of the church that mm-hmm. you can serve. Yeah. Um, using your artistic ability, mm-hmm. right, to, to express your, your worship of God, using the, the, the talents that God gave you. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you play sports, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. Uh, share that one with our students a lot. Um, using the athletic abilities that God gave you and, and attributing those those talents to God, mm-hmm. um, or if you have a, a knack for gardening, mm-hmm. making things grow, uh, using that as an opportunity to meet with your neighbors and mm-hmm. and, and say, uh, yeah, I, I feel like God gave me this gift for having a green thumb. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of these things are ways to authentically worship, mm-hmm. uh, and so uh, maybe take some time and, and reflect and say, uh, what are the things in your life that that uh, that you can use to authentically worship mm-hmm. that. Uh, might be music, might not be music, yeah. might be something we mentioned, might be something else. Yeah, I hope it's not something we mentioned because yeah. God's made us all so unique that there are countless ways that me and you could sit here and try and think of all of them. Yeah. And we never would. Mm-hmm. Like, we just never would. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I, that would be my encouragement. Coming out of authentic worship, the coming out of the sermon and in the midst of this series, how has God gifted you? to authentically be who you are mm-hmm. and authentically worship him through the way that you live mm-hmm. and the representation of who Christ is that you bring to your world, whatever mm-hmm. that is. If it is a gardening club, if it is a, um, if it's a, an auto, like if you're, mm-hmm. if you're good with cars and you work yeah. in the shop, like how do you represent Christ in that space and how is that mm-hmm. an expression of authentic worship? Yeah. If you're great with spreadsheets, how yeah. can you bless your coworkers who are not good with <laughs> spreadsheets? Uh, like it, there's so many ways that, that this could work, right? It's true. It's true. Um, and, and believe me, uh, as someone who works with a lot of pastors, uh, many pastors are not good with spreadsheets. I love spreadsheets. Um, they're amazing, right? <laughs> I but I think, I think we're in the minority, Woo! honestly. <laughs> um, but uh, hey, thank you so much of for course. sitting down with us, sharing about authentic worship. If you want to hear more from Pastor Ty about this topic, I'll go ahead and add a banner to that message. Woo. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next week. <laughs>